And welcome. Our top story at this hour on the one-year anniversary of Russia's war in Ukraine, India abstained from voting on the United Nations resolution against Moscow calling for an end to the war. India's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ruchira Kamboj, said the resolution wasn't enough to achieve the goal of a lasting peace. However, India said it will always call for dialogue and diplomacy as the only viable way out to the conflict. Mr. President, India's approach to the Ukraine conflict will continue to be people-centric. We are providing both humanitarian assistance to Ukraine and economic support to some of our neighbors in the global south under economic distress, even as they stare at the escalating costs of food, of fuel and fertilizers, which has been a consequential fallout of the ongoing conflict. Last September, at a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said today's era is not for war. Meanwhile, Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar has said the United Nations is like a company that no longer reflects the reality of the world. He said it is like shareholders have changed in the United Nations, but the management has not. So there are new shareholders who want fair management, but old guys don't want to let it go. This comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken say that India was likely on a trajectory away from alignment with Russia. Lincoln maintained India has had long-standing relationship with Russia that is challenging to break off in one fell swoop. Amid the tensions, the U.S. Secretary of State is due to visit India next week to attend the G20 foreign minister's meeting. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will also attend the meeting talking about India and its G20 presidency. French Foreign Minister said France is hoping that New Delhi makes it possible to bring the international community to look at the right responses on Ukraine. One and one, and then I'll have to Russia. Thank you so much, um, yeah, well, Madam Foreign Minister. Susan Tehrani from We On News India. My question is regarding the G20 and its presidency under India, and France is such a vital partner. What is your opinion about the role G20 can play this year in possibly bringing a resolution or some kind of negotiation and settlement to the Ukraine conflict? Thank you. As G20 president this year, we do hope that India will play that same role, such as to make it possible to bring the international community to look at what's happening, to find the right responses, and always, always doing so whilst trying to bring people into line, everyone into line with international law. International law is the foundation of peace and stability across the world. India is committed to that, those principles. We're aware of that, and we count on India this year to continue the work that had been done last year by Indonesia. Well, for more on this, our correspondent Anas Malik is joining us from Harson. Anas, good to see you, and I can see you are well protected. By November last year, Ukrainian forces had liberated Harson, but Russian forces continued to shell it from across the Dnieper River. With that in mind, how does the city look like now? How are they marking one year since the invasion? What's happening around you? Lerik, uh, the shelling is still continuing. We can hear it in, in somewhat of a distance. Uh, shells continue to f fall in. Not exactly, fortunately, not exactly where I am, but certainly nearby uh, enough uh, ne nearby enough that it can be heard. And it can be heard in a much more clearer terms, in a much more clearer manner. Uh, the city is a ghost town. Behind me, I'll just get aside and I'll show you, you if you so see those shards of rocket, uh, that's a bus, uh, a bus stop that was shelled just this morning. That's a shard of the rocket, a fresh shard of the rocket that was shelled, that, that, uh, that came out from the rocket that, uh, that was uh, used in the shelling just this morning. This explains on how dire the situation is. I'll just get a side and pan around as well and we'll show you. These are 
those streets those houses that have been damaged uh, there had been a literal battle over here both infantry and armory wise uh, artillery wise and infantry wise and uh, after which uh, in november after eight months of or nine months of russian occupation uh, the, the the city of kherson was liberated i'll just get aside and i'll try to explain you furthermore uh, this is the main street to kherson behind behind me and we'll try to zoom in there as well to that side behind me is the Nipir River. Uh, I'm sure you would be able to see it in a short while from now. Uh, th that is the Nipir River uh, and uh, beyond that, there's still what we what we believe is a situation uh, that the Russian side, uh, as it's being said, they still shell and they still they, they, it's believed that beyond the river is what uh, is where from where the fire is incoming from. That river that you see that you see it flows from the south of Russia, uh, from south of Belarus, and onwards to Ukraine and to to the Black Sea as well. So this explains uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the importance importance of Kherson by and large to this region why the Russian side wanted to occupy it uh, Kherson is about 70 kilometers uh, from Mykolaiv uh, but in normal cases it would have taken you uh, 40 minutes uh, today it took us about an hour and a half to drive from uh, Mykolaiv to, uh, to Kherson uh, because of the road situation so um, not all is well over here and you can feel that palpable fear that grimness in the air these these roads these emptiness this shallowness they speak themselves the damage the destruction that speaks volumes for what the people have suffered and what the people feel even now eric that is our correspondent anas malik live in harson anas malik stay safe and thank you very much for your insights today let's continue talking about this first year anniversary or one year anniversary of the ukraine war and for more on this we are now being joined by pankaj saran from new delhi he is a former deputy national security advisor of india and former indian ambassador to russia pankaj is currently the convener of a think tank called nut strat pankaj welcome to the program thank you so much Thank when you. we talk about India's role in diffusing the tensions, what are the possibilities of that, having in mind that India has strong relationship with Russia that cannot be broken easily? Thank you. I think uh, in the last one year, India has uh, done uh, whatever it could to contribute to reduction of tensions, both by its actions as well as its uh, statements. And we have said that this is not a time for war. We have kept in touch with all sides. Uh, we have maintained channels of communication with everyone. So uh, insofar as uh, uh, making the right noises is concerned, I think we have done everything. And above it all, we have also uh, spoken out along with the Global South to convey to the parties that there are far more pressing issues facing the world than the Ukrainian crisis. So uh, this is as much as I think India can do to lend its moral authority, its credibility and its uh, maturity to what is going to be and what is actually a destructive war. Well put, Pankaj. India is hosting the G20 summit and going by the Prime Minister's statements, today's era is not for war. What sort of impetus or impact will India have through the G20 to marshal calls to end the conflict in Ukraine? Well, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for India to exercise its uh, uh, global role uh, during its presidency of the G20. And uh, Indonesia faced a difficult time because of the political tensions in Europe. But I think India is well placed uh, in terms of its credibility and in terms of the, the weight of its voice uh, to ensure that the G20 uh, remains true to its purpose uh, to address the challenges of the world, particularly of the global south, on issues which really bother us, such as climate change, etc., and uh, ensure that we keep politics and security out of the G20 framework. And above it all, I think we provide an excellent platform for all sides to physically participate, attend meetings, and uh, continue with 
normal interstate business. Pankaj, finally, various quarters have been agitating and pushing for a way out, you know, or rather a sort of dialogue. Do you see that happening this year? What will it take for both sides, that is Ukraine and Russia, to compromise? I think the only dialogue which will uh, resolve this problem is a dialogue between the United States and Russia. And uh, all it takes is for both these parties and sides to display the political will to come to the table and discuss the issues at hand, which are both sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as the mutual security of all sides. Because the genesis of this whole thing lies in what kind of a security architecture will define Europe. And therefore, I feel that uh, all it will take is a uh, face-to-face -face discussion between President Biden and President Putin. All right. Former Deputy National Security Advisor of India and convener of Nat Strat, Pankaj Saran, thank you for your insights and for talking to us today. Thank you so much for having me.